hey guys thank you for stopping by don't forget to subscribe like and share and i hope you enjoy this interview all right, like I mentioned earlier on, we'll be assessing a CNG distribution in Nigeria. And I have with me Michael Luluwagbe, the Chief Executive and Project Director of the Presidential CNG Initiative, joining me here. Mr. Luluwagbe, good to see you and welcome. It's a pleasure. Now, let's Thanks get started. Me. You're welcome. Since the last time you, you were here, that should be like a few months ago, I yes. guess before the hardship protest, that should be like six months ago, six months more ago. than that. Yeah, more than that. How many CNG buses have been delivered so far? Uh, so far, of across the, the country, of course. Um, so, if you're talking about the one that was directly ordered by the federal government, there was over 535 that has been ordered by the federal government, and we've delivered about um, over 100 of those. Uh, we, I think, about 140 so far. 535 ordered so far by the federal government. Yes, and f over 140 have been delivered. Um, in addition to that, of course, you have the ones that are being enabled by the private sector and uh, various state government as well as private sector players have also been um, acquiring CNG buses as the case may be across the country. But like I said then, and I will say it again, uh, the big opportunity for us is how much of the existing uh, uh, ICE engine, uh, that's internal combustion engine platforms, can we convert? And that is where the emphasis of our programs are. The, uh, bus acquisition and delivery can only do so much because you already have way over 12 million vehicles in Nigeria. It's impossible mm -hmm. for us to deliver 2, 3 million vehicles to replace that. What we need to do is to convert the existing uh, vehicle platforms in Nigeria, which the president has committed to having a million conversions by 2027. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are implementing across our conversion program. Okay, I'll come to that in, yeah. a, in a bit in terms of conversion. Yeah. Do you have an idea of perhaps how much or how many private sector has has done because i know for yeah, example we're tracking, seen, yes we're tracking yes we're tracking beyond that i mean those are manufacturers you know yes, is also yes. manufacturing for us is the government um, is the federal government ordering for yeah for yeah on the under we ordered by the federal government for how many hundred uh, out capacity. of the 535 in addition to in the addition five, to five. To the five so making 635 now ordered by yeah, the federal so government far. Okay. and um yes so but in reality the private sector and state government have been deployed i've deployed way over 2000 cng buses in the last one year the uh, private sector and state government. State government, yes. Where so are they state government. From? Is it not the same markets you guys are in? No, and you, most of and them. And the federal government was giving excuses. In fact, you gave me that excuse the yeah. last time you came that, yeah. you know, the market is a lot of people are on the queue yeah. and all of that and all of that. Yeah. So if federal government and states are doing more than the federal government, they're supposed they have to, to have do more the than financial the federal government. You have, 30, you have 37 states. But not all the states are, are ordering. Not all the states. Yes. A few states, about at least 10 of the states have ordered. Yes. Um, Niger State ordered 200. But you know some of the states are ordering used buses, very different. We are not going to order used buses in our case. So the federal government has a much higher threshold in terms of quality of things that you need to The, the used buses they are, they are ordering, uh, they ordered, is it new? Okay, you're saying used buses, yes, so that yes. means they convert them? No, no, they actually brought in used buses. Some of them brought it from China, some of them brought in from other countries. Okay, used CNG. Yes. Uh, so they are the fairly used, the yeah, they have, of Yeah, it. they have different, different approaches to it, yeah. Okay. Again, that's what you are going to obtain. It's a federal government. We do what we can respond to. The state government also are encouraged to do their bit. That is what we're encouraging folks to do. At the end of the day, our program is not just about federal government spending. It's actually more about catalyzing both the private sector and the state government and local government to do their part. Mm. Yeah. Um, why are we still seeing a bit of slow ro ro rollouts? It's not slow. It's actually quite fast. I mean, uh, in the world, quite, we're talking, quite fast. it's actually quite fast when because it takes, you, it takes you 9 to 12 in. months. Yeah. Well, we, maybe we should have started this like 20 years ago. Um, we're just starting now, but the reality is that there's a, there's a learning curve. For example, your conversion centers, it will take them a while to be able to get used to the technology of doing so. You have seen new conversion centers spring up every day. Last year, we just had seven of them. Uh, today, we have well over 125. These are new businesses. And all of them, we have technicians that are new to this work. So maybe a little slower at the beginning. As time goes on, they pick up and they do more. But reality is the reality. There's a technical uh, bottleneck that you have to solve, which is experience. And uh, the more they do, the quicker they uh, also roll out. But we need to start, and that's what we've done. We've started. One million vehicle conversion by 2027. Yes. That is also quite unambitious. Not really. Um, um, a bit unambitious. By 2027, which mm. is like three years from now, when mm. this administration would wind down, mm -hmm. a bit unambitious unambi uh, in the sense that you have about 14 million cars on Nigerian roads. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, and um, yeah, so. No, it's why, not, it's why, not why, on again, I, I Again, I try to tell people to draw parallels to people that have done it. And so that's what you're talking about. Iran has done 6.5 million vehicles in the last 25 years. India has done uh, 5 million vehicles in the last 20 years. Egypt started three years ago. They've done 105,000 vehicles. That's why, they've done. Why? Because petrol and petrol is still is still being used. No, not really. Way. It's because it's a technical challenge. I mean, again, people have to understand when you have a technical and engineering challenge. It's a technical challenge. How many vehicles can you convert in a day? Typically, one per day in a particular place. So, if you want to do a million vehicles, that means you're doing 300,000 vehicles in a year, which means you're doing 1,000 vehicles a day, you need 1,000 conversion centers. So, so you, you need to have... Convert one car, yeah. that is, conversion is one per about day. About one per day, yes. Really? It's like, it's like uh, taking an entire vehicle and turning it from use of just petrol to use of petrol and gas. I mean, it's a technical activity. It's not just plug and play. You have to really just go into the system, the engine, you have to work it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to test it. You want to make sure it's also safe. So you need 1,000 conversion uh, centers to do that. And of course, you do not have a thousand conversion centers from day one. We, we had, like I said, seven last year. We have about 125 today. And then we are going to increase it as we are ramping up the program. So it's a technical challenge, an investment challenge. You have this complete bucket of things that you need to do. You need to bring in the conversion kits. You need to start manufacturing them. You need to test them. You need to make sure they are safe. These are the things that you need to do. But it's not impossible to do. But you must ramp up and you must start. How many conversion centers do you have across the country? Over 125 today. Is we had seven enough? this time last year. Is that no, we, don't, we need a thousand. We need a thousand. You had seven this time, last, this time year? last year. We have 125 today. So in you are giving yourself a part on over, that. Over a, more than a part. We plan for 100. We already have 125. I don't want. Is it powered strictly by the FG? No, it's supported. Some? No, it's not. We give them business. So we send okay. business to them and they do business. So if a commercial driver walks into any of these centers today that is under our program, they will be able to register for what we call the conversion incentive program, which provides a gas for free. And these folks are going to install it also for free and then we pay them for it. So can I convert my car? Today? You're not a commercial driver. When did you join your Okay, okay. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> not a commercial driver. Yeah. Yes. So when would it be open? Um, it's already top, open for you, you just have to yes, pay for it. Yes, I just have to pay yeah. for it, and that has to come out of pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to pay for as, it. As it were. How, much, is, um, how <coughs> much does CNG cost per, per kg? No, it's not per kg, per SEM. It yes. depends, between, yes. uh, between 213 naira today and 350, depending on where you're buying from. 213 naira? Yes. 250? To 350, to, to 350, 350, depending on where, where you're buying for and what you're buying it for. That's still a bit expensive too. That's still a it's, you know, it's about thirty percent of what you pay for diesel, for diesel mm -hmm. and petrol. Yeah, so it's way more cheaper. So if you're going, to, if you are going to between here and Kano today, uh, you probably feel twice. Uh, mm -hmm. So you feel in Abuja, and then you feel again in Kaduna to get to Kano, and your total expenditure will be roughly about ten thousand uh, naira compared to about one hundred and twenty thousand naira if you're using petrol. How much is price of conversion now? The price has of it, conversion it, depends yeah. also on the vehicle and the size of vehicle, and it ranges between. 600,000 to 1 million. The, the commercial one you're t telling me about, I'm not a commercial bus driver, mm -hmm. but for commercials that you've been doing, how much is it? It's free. What if you are private sector owners that have the big transport guys that want to convert? It's also free. And Any they, commercial vehicle is free on our uh, program. Government is taking that cost. Absolutely. How because much? It, because I, 90 I have the I'm because 90 to percent, now. Because 90 yes. percent of Nigerians use commercial, commercial vehicles. vehicles. That's right. why we are targeting them. And all, not all vehicles are commercial. How much does it yeah. cost? Yes. That's How much does it cost government? Yes. It's about a million naira. About a million naira yes. per And then vehicle. if you had, if you had um, the installation cost, it takes you to about 1.15, 1.2 million naira. How long is this initiative going to be on for? Because you are the president of the initiative. Will you be there to the president? No, no, the president is the president. I'm just coordinating for him. <laughs> but the reality is, yes, as, as, as far as the president is concerned, is that as long as we have vehicles consuming petrol and diesel that is destroying our budget, you had that conversation with a gentleman a while ago, and you can see mm -hmm. from that conversation that we have a problem in Nigeria with petrol and diesel. I mean, if we don't recognize it, then we have a problem. $10 billion we're spending every year on subsidy prior to this, $10 billion that we don't have. And we do not even know the amount that we actually consume as a country. That's a problem. So as far as the president is concerned, we need to replace and displace PMS and diesel completely. We can make it, we can export it to other countries, but if we have, as long as we have ICE vehicles, we need to convert as many of them as possible to gas.
Mm. Because we are a gas country. We do, we, petrol and diesel should, be a, should sort of be like a backup for, for the main. How much investment has been attracted so far? Over $175 million. You're talking about 100 conversion centers. $175 about million? Dollars. Yes, about uh, 12 mother stations, each costing about $5 million, uh, that have been commissioned since uh, January of this year. Uh, we looked into commission at least additional five before the end of the year. We've oh, seen, private sector, yes, private extent? sector. Where we've already commissioned, we have already, we are looking at about four to five LNG projects. Two of them will be commissioned before the end of the year as well. Uh, mini LNG projects uh, in Aja and as well as an industrial park, Ajakuta Industrial Park for CNG. So all of these investments, including for refueling stations, we've seen a jump in terms of permits for CNG stations within NMDPRA system from just five permits requests as at this time last year to over 72 as I'm talking to you right now. We've seen NMPC invest in uh, I was 12 coming stations. To that. In, uh, to the NMPC uh, yes. relationship, or because I know that the NMPC are limited, has said it wants to have 100 CNG sites. Yes, yeah, so they've done 12 so far, and uh, they've already received the equipment for 40. NIPCO has received the equipment for 32, and uh, of that, they've already commissioned nine of them. Bovas is currently installing eight. Matrix is doing five. Um, and we, through our own refueling initiative with the smaller players that are in conversions, we're doing additional 10. So you can see that all of these investments are going into the sector, and of course, that's jobs. That's about $175 million. $175 million. What mm -hmm. is the incentive for the attraction? First and uh, foremost, last year, December, we did the import duty exemption uh, uh, regime for the CNG sector as well as the EV sector. Uh, we also extended that, of course, to a VAT exemption for the sector that was approved last week by Mr. President. Uh, we've also done a, uh, a concessionary pricing regime for CNG, which actually accelerated the return for anyone who invests in autogas CNG that was released by NMDPR in, uh, in uh, March. Beyond that, also Mr. President has put his uh, money where his mouth is. He's now requiring that all federal government MDAs can only strictly buy CNG-enabled vehicles, which also, of course, is a... Is a uh, enablement for the auto automotive sector as Has well. It started already. Have it started you already. No, yeah, all the approval. The MDAs everything. have you seen them? Yes, yes. Customs went for approval for CNG vehicles. EFCC is buying CNG buses. Uh, we are seeing uh, the same thing done by the Nigerian police and uh, as well as many of the others. So we are beginning to see that this is already going to have an impact on the automotive sector. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm being told we have a question. Mm. L let's see if I can quickly get that before we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no name. Here in Akwaibom State, we don't have CNG filling station. And also, my name was included as one of the conversion centers for Akwaibom State through Autogas. I was told that the PCNGIO initiative will visit Akwaibom State for inspection, and up till now, nothing has been done. Okay, his name is Kristen Daniel from you, a CNG conversion expert. So we'll get there. people are watching. Yeah, are slowly, you promising slowly. him that? Next have, you, have you been to Akwaibom? Yeah, we've been to Akwaibom. We went okay. to do um, site surveillance. We have activated in 10 states. Okay. Uh, we've activated in Lagos, Ogun, Oyo, um, Edo Delta, uh, Kogi, Nasarawa, okay. FCT, Kaduna, and uh, Ikiti. And so you will still week. go back to Akwaibom, is uh, that what yes, you're saying? Yes, very soon. The next phase will be Kwara as well as Niger States, and then we'll initiate with a uh, Portacot towards the Akwaibom, Cross River, and Aziz. Abia, and Enugu. Yes. Okay, I hope, Chris and Daniel, when that happens, you just let us know. Just also send it. Send us yeah. a WhatsApp to just like the way you've sent. So thank yeah. you for your question. Just before we go, what you've told me now in terms of free conversion kits and all of that yeah. is also subsidy. Yes. Yes, it's subsidy. It's adoption it's, subsidy. Yes. It's better than, uh, than consumption subsidy. Uh, so, so when will that end? Because will the government continue to do that? No, so... Is there a timeline? The so no, the government has given a cap. take something. No, it's not even a timeline. It's a one yeah. million... So we've said, because we know that in Nigeria, you have approximately about 1.5 million commercial vehicles. So if we are able to get two thirds of them, and you know a lot of them also die after a while because you are, uh, they are getting old, right? So our goal is to have at least one million of them that we believe will be in service for the next five to ten years, converted to natural gas. So if that happens, then we put a considerable relief for the people when it comes to commercial activities. And of course, we are also looking at alternatives for folks to finance, people that are private. Yes, I asked you that question yeah, the last time yeah, in terms yeah, of yeah. if you're engaging with banks and for no, example... No, we're even engaging with consumer credit. So I don't uh, know if that has yes. improved from the last time I asked. We're making progress. Okay. Um, I knock on wood, I hope that this quarter we'll be able to get something launched with consumer credit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll talk to you again soon. 
Very well. Let's see what has improved from this interview. No problem. Um, 125 conversion center. Hopefully next time I say 250. 250. Okay. Thank you. So the world is uh, the world is out there. Thank you very much Thanks. for joining. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Nancy. All right. I've been speaking with Engineer Michael Olu Agbemi, who is the Chief Executive and Project Director, President Shell CNG Initiative. So many, so many of you committees are called it as well. <laughs> all right. I'll see you all again next time. I am Nancy Naji. Be the best you can be and be the change that you want to see. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you get to see all their uh, interviews. And uh, the news is up next. Thank you for watching. In case this is your first time watching us, thank you. Don't subscribe to the channel, drop your comments as well as like, and most of all, share our content. Bye.